<clears throat> Coming to you from snowy Duluth, Minnesota, inside Bent Paddle. Welcome to the Soda Pod. Such an honor to be here. Thank you for having us. We're so I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> Hi guys. Oh, yes, this this is much different than I know the first time that we got together over yeah. uh, over video, and uh, you were actually out on your porch in. Oh, I know Colin was in his uh, Hawaiian garb. <laughs> yes. And Sorry. now we're looking outside, and yes, Tisha's point, Duluth, Minnesota, full, full go here in April. Hey, I have to say, though, at the time of this recording, it is my birthday. It is National Beer Day, Woo! and it's freaking snowing just like my home in Canada. So, hey, wow. I couldn't be happier, so thank you. <laughs> Man, happy birthday. Cool. Here's to uh, 29. <laughs> Subtly drops that in as we start. <laughs> wants us to know what's up i wanted to, <laughs> everyone to know it's national beer day which I, I didn't know until i went on twitter this morning oh that yeah. that's amazing yeah. so there you go it's fitting <laughs> <laughs> right. no better place than the beer mecca of oh. the u.s duluth yes oh Un my goodness unbelievable we'll talk about that a little bit i mean we've talked about it quite a bit but for those that haven't paid attention Duluth, for in the grand scheme of things how small a city this is just endless endless beer like such good breweries. I know even the cider scene is picking up here as yep. well, but I mean the greater Duluth area too. And we start talking about two harbors with castle danger going across the water to superior. Th there's just so much here. And uh, I know actually just speaking here recently with our friends over at castle danger, they talked a lot about, well, yeah, we kind of have a cheat code here. It's called Lake Superior's water. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's it's just amazing that we get this amazing brewing water. Well, let's so. dive into that first. Yeah. Like, was that a factor in opening shop here in Duluth other than, you know, your roots? Yes, huge factor, actually. So I'm uh, of the four co-founders of Ben Paddle. I'm the only one that was born here. Oh, okay. Though Brian and Karen are business partners, they uh, met at UMD, the University of Minnesota Duluth. But yeah, the water here was, not only did we want to move back to Duluth, but the water w is just an amazing blank slate for brewing. Oh, amazing. So what brought you all together together as business partners? Obviously two couples, you know, going into business together in the craft beer world. And I mean, in this state where it's just booming, why did you guys choose to become business partners? That's a great question. We, um, so we all met in the 2000s in the brewing scene in the, in Minneapolis, primarily the Twin Cities. And uh, we just, both Brian and Colin were working for brew pubs, um, successful brew pubs down there. And we all kind of knew each other from beer festivals and the Minnesota Craft Brewers Guild. And we, when we started thinking about branching off on our own, um, the Tonuses, our business partners, were doing the same thing and they wanted to branch out on their own. Somehow we broached the subject. Um, we were at the Blue Nile, which is a craft beer bar in Minneapolis. And Karen and I were just sort of like, the boys should talk to each other. And then they had like four or five hours worth of beer where they just covered an amazing passion and similar brewing styles. And that's how Ben Paddle was kind of born. And we wanted to come to Duluth because of the water, as said, and just to kind of make a footprint here in a different way. And so what, like four or five hours of heavy drinking to kind of come together on this business plan? Like, <laughs> that's how is that does. how they ended up like smashing a paddle and that's where we got the name or where, where does that come from? That's basically it. But <laughs> no, the, the, but four or five hours of beer drinking can lead to many epiphanies of all sorts. Yeah. Uh, but in general, the bent paddle name came from the bent shaft canoe paddle that's used um, like in the boundary waters or lake sure. paddling. Um, so that's a nice check in with okay. the brand. Sure. Um, but the bent paddle... And the broken paddle that is of lore is actually here in our tap room. And it is something so Brian used to stir the mash at Rock Bottom, which is where he was at, Rock Bottom, Minneapolis. And on his last day of brewing, it broke in half. And hence, Ben Paddle was born. Wow. Right wow. And That's an awesome story. It's in the backs. Uh, and it's got the story. And we surprised them. Uh, we surprised the Tonuses by framing it and putting the story up um, the day we opened this newer tap That's room. That's so cool. Wow. It was neat. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> well, let's get into some of the beer. Uh, what are you drinking, Hoppy? So I have, uh, apparently we've got a couple of different variations here, spinoffs of the Bent Hop that everyone knows and loves. So the one I have here is uh, just a double dry hop variety of it. Yep. Delightful. I mean, it's it's not a far cry, obviously, from where it started. But it again, if you like dry hop beers, you're obviously going to love this pivot. Uh, I know the other ones. So there was one that was a, a Citra bump. And then what was the third? Uh, slightly angled. Slightly so angled. It's just like a slight change of recipe. Okay. Yeah. I like it. D delicious, though. Obviously. Cool. No, uh, everything that 
you know the hoppy says about ben paddle and i mean my my first taster here is is unbelievable as well but you said you have some new stuff coming you know down the line as well so i know you want to talk about that so so let's get into it because i know you're drinking something uh, pretty special here as well yes and um i'm drinking the cosmic lounge and so that's our new hazy uh and we're really excited we haven't had a hazy other than a couple like test batches in the tap room but this is coming out right now another fun one that's coming out soon is a light lager and that's kind of our, you know, craft twist on the the macro beer side of right. things. And it's only 110 calories. So if you're, you know, calorie conscious, it's a nice <laughs> way to uh, try Ben Paddle and still have that. So that's coming out. Um, I'd say the biggest deal, though, is after approximately 10 years, we are refreshing all of our year-round brands. So, uh -oh. yeah, the look of Venture Pills, Ben Top. Um, we're changing ESB to the 14 degree amber, mm -hmm. the black ale and the and the coffee cold pressed black all have a new look that's like coming out like right now. Awesome. Yeah. So so why the change? Just because you know you gotta update things or or was there a specific reason for that? It's not it's that, but also just and some of the design we had from 10 years ago is very grid style, okay. and that was like a trend at the time. And um, it's very dark too. So this new packaging has just a lighter, brighter, modern look. And my favorite piece of it is each of the boxes and the cans depicts an iconic Lake Superior lakeshore, cool. like a beach. And then on the bottom of each of the six pack boxes is the geo coordinates to that very beach. Nice. Oh. So you're, you're just, if anything, you're getting more creative with it with the yep. rebrand. So that's so cool. It's fun. Um, cool. Let's talk about the hazy because you were saying that it's. Ben Paddle, you know, stayed a little, stayed away from the hazies a little bit. So my questions are like, why did you not go down the hazy route when everyone else did? And, and why now? Um, well, we wanted to because it's just such a popular style. And our our, our pilot brewer, Neil, um, was just doing really cool hazies. And people were really liking them in the tap room. And so our, you know, the husbands, Brian and Colin, are traditionalists. And hazy's not part of the tradition. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we held out for a long time, but public demanded it. And here we are with a hazy we all love. So it's called, called Cosmic Lounge. Um, it's just funky and delicious, and we're really proud of it. Well, Hobby here is a huge hazy fan, so <clears throat> I mean, I just love IPAs in general. But yes, the <laughs> hazies are great. Do you, have you had any other beers like that though, where it's like we kind of pushed back, but because of popular demand, we had to make this, and all of a sudden, wow, that was a great it's decision. A hit, yeah. Uh, yes. So also sours in general yes. are the, brewer, <laughs> the original brewers. That's, that's the taboo. <laughs> Not that's our taboo it. too. <laughs> <laughs> but we um, put out a couple of sours. Again, they were incredibly popular. I love them personally. And now we have a whole series of like four a year called the Wilderness Tuxedo okay. um, group. And it's just fun. The next one that com is coming out is called Citrus Smash. And then we have one called Punch Bowl coming. And uh, Pog, which is that, you know, you were referencing that Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. That's the Pog style. Nice. Okay. Passion fruit, orange uh, guava. Um, so yeah, it's just a fun thing that we did not say. We said no, no sours, <laughs> but that was in 2012, and now we're 10 years later, and it was time coming. We got we have as many sours now, and they're I even, wonderful. I didn't even know what a sour was in 2012. To be perfectly <laughs> right? honest, yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> exactly. very fair. Right. And I mean, so talk about the change too from ESB to 14 degree yeah. amber because yes. I, I walked in the tap room and I'm not gonna lie, I had like a half second of panic when yeah. I'm like, Where's uh, where is it? Where's <laughs> it? <laughs> that, when the beer tenders are getting that constantly in the tap because <laughs> the sign has been up for like two weeks. Um, but ESB, it's a fascinating thing because ESB stands for extra special bitter. It's a classic European style mostly from um, England and you hear the word bitter and people who aren't into hoppy beers uh, yeah. kind of freak out about it but mm -hmm. it's like the most malt forward beer that is like out there so it was scaring people away who would have loved it and so the chain it's just a name change to 14 degree amber so it's kind of you know harking back to the 14 degree ESB um, but we just changed it to Amber. And to be honest, in the last two weeks, it's like tripled in sales. No <laughs> way. That's <laughs> wow. Because of the name change. Just for me, like I, one of the things yeah. too with that beer, like I'm, I'm not having it right now. I'm sure I will shortly. But <laughs> it, it was very weird the first time I came to your tap room like three years ago that I had the nitro version of it. Ooh, I'm like, this so doesn't good. make sense. Like, why would you make this a nitro? And then I <laughs> so taste perfect. it. I'm like, that's why. That's wow. why. That's so British. Like, Oh, it was yeah. so good. So good too. Yeah. Well, Hobby, explain your experience first experience coming here because obviously this is my first experience and it's i'm i'm almost it's hard for me to find the words i'm so impressed with a the facility i mean how 
you know, amazing. The hospitality has been thus far. Welcome to Minnesota, by the way. Uh, of course. So happy to have you. But, I mean, Hoppy, I mean, you know, tell us about your first experience coming here. I mean, it's just, you you hear about it, right? You hear about it for so long, and every brewery has their own different vibe, like good for different reasons. Yep. And you come in here, and you kind of get a weird mix of a lot of it, right? Like, at first, you walk in, you see the exposed brick, open, like, game area, foosball, you know, bubble hockey. Like, you get that kind of vibe. Then you go across all the way to the other end of the tap room, and you have, like, this, like, luxury lounge-type feel. We got the nice fire stoked yeah. up. We got the, like comfy like curvy corner uh cushions to sit on like just very very like different vibes but mm -hmm. like it transitions so well it's not like there's just like a cutoff and it's like oh now you're entering the lounge right <laughs> like these type you know these people who like this vibe here and these people yep. like you know the fun vibe over here it's it's just it's a mix and that's i'm totally picking up what you're putting down there for sure and it, it's it's amazing what, what you all have done here and i mean Shoot, I'm on my eyes catching your merch too, which is yeah, is very nice. I like those. Uh, I like those sweaters over there. Some serious sweaters. Um, okay, I, I, so doing my research before coming here, I, I have a question. And uh, coming from Vancouver Island, I mean, I'm a I'm a practitioner of the yoga. So tell me about Ooh. brewery yoga. For sure. So um, every once a month on Saturdays, um, we partner with Rooney Yoga, who are friends of ours. Okay. And do, but since the beginning, since the old tap room, so we've been in this newer tap room since 2018. But originally, um, people wanted to do some yoga and then have beer together. So, you know, when you go to a yoga class, everyone goes and then they leave. Um, that's what I love about brewery yoga is you kind of hang out at the end and okay. talk about yoga, talk about beer. Uh, so that is just something we've kept on for a very long time. And something cool that's happening this week is they're bringing in a live cellist. <laughs> To oh, for the yoga class, yeah, wow, <laughs> that's new, and that's all Runa, that's what they that's do, cool. Runa yoga. Okay. Um, but it's just kind of fun, and I think we should make up pose names after beers the Ooh. hoppy, the malt forward dog. <laughs> I don't know, yes. oh my god, we, well, we got a little bit of a drive back to the cities, and I could make a <laughs> you, whole list and send, send them to you. I love I it. That that's cool. so, so, do you do that at their yoga studio, or do you guys it's here? Okay, it here? so it's here. Um, well, it's not in this room, it's in the old tap room, which a lot okay. of people love. So, in Minnesota, we can only have one tap room, right? Right, because um, Minnesota laws are so awful, <laughs> you know, they're real advanced. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> we, we do it in the old tap room, um, and it's the only thing we do over there other than tour launching, and people love to be in that space. It's nice and quiet on a Saturday. Um, so you get to just see the brewery and experience yoga at the same time. It's kind of so cool. cool. Well, I mean, that that's a like small thread when you say it's a monthly thing, but a small piece of the community aspect of yes. things. But just talk about like Duluth, right? Every brewery we have met with in a different way has talked about how important the community is and in playing into just what makes their brewery so great. And you guys, you got the other breweries too that kind of tie into that, like just unique experience like what talk to that well sure so we're in the lincoln park just like neighborhood of duluth and when we got here in 2013 ish um we it was not a very developed area so it's been so fascinating to see all these people move in we called it the craft district on purpose <laughs> so like we're crafting beer frost rivers crafting packs um there's just tons of these artisans that yeah. have small businesses and it's just developed in a really cool way, but also the other brewing community. So I, whenever I travel and Colin and I travel together, we try to find the districts that have a lot of craft beer. So you can park once sure. and wander around no, and yeah, try sure. all the things. And so I love that we've created that here. So we have us and there's a couple of cideries, Wild State and Duluth Cider yeah. or some minor. The new Warrior Brewing is all like if you want to go on a bit of a hike, you can do all of that at once in Lincoln Park. But then in general in Duluth, we have Canal Park, which is a really cool touristy area. And that has hoops and Vikra distilling which is amazing and um canal park brewing so it's just and then the originals like fitkers and whatnot and then up the shore to castle danger so we all just are sort of trying to create a beer scene here that or you know a beverage scene here uh <laughs> that makes people want to travel here for beyond just looking at the the boats and the bridge which is wonderful and that's the combo right yep. <laughs> dangerous that's lethal yep. that's like that's how i got my wife up here initially it's like oh yeah sure we'll go on hikes we'll look at the nice beautiful scenes and then we're going to a bunch of yep, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> no it, it's it's beautiful even in i shouldn't say the dead of winter because it's april but even in you know the winter weather like 
and, and maybe this is just the Canadian me speaking, <laughs> but it truly is a beautiful spot. And yeah. like, there's something special, you know, just of the, of this place for the arts district, for the craft district and just the scenery itself. So, I mean, again, from someone who comes from Vancouver Island, the Hawaii of Canada, beautiful. I could see myself in Duluth, <laughs> I honestly. I love that. Well, yeah. And we have the hill, which is lovely. Yeah. This whole like port thing with the boats coming in and out. And um, when... Colin's not from here. He's from St. Louis Park in, in the cities. And he'd lived here for like a few months and he was like, it's really foggy here. <laughs> I'm like, it's a port. Yep. <laughs> like, it's the, it's the Harbor city. Right. Right. <laughs> so it's just beautiful. And we have so many beaches, so many outdoor things, um, a growing entrepreneurial scene. And it's just the best place to live. Dang. And I mean, so you guys do this on the regular, right? You try and find the Duluths outside of Duluth. Like, what's your favorite one that the two of you have stumbled on? Oh, man. That's a great question. We, let's see. I mean, Austin is wonderful. They have a neat beer scene. But in terms of, like, smaller places, well, I went to school at Ma in Madison in Wisconsin. Um, and they have some fun breweries plus the university. Um, Asheville, North Carolina. That's my final That's, answer. I've heard that one a lot. <laughs> hey, hey, our boy, shout out to yeah. Brewery Travels. Unbelievable episode talking about uh, cool. that region as well. Yeah, the I other one that. that I've heard a lot too is Portland, Maine. My oh, my wife went out been? there with my mom and my sister and like they just did a whole like, oh, let's go get lobster rolls and stuff. Mm. But like all of them who are like way less beer nerdy than us, like they were floored. They're like, I have wow, to mark this it is down. different. This okay. is different. Super and, cool. and to your point, they're all within walking distance of each other. So it's just perfect. Yeah. Well, that's so cool to hear because again, in, in British Columbia, especially where, where I'm from in Vancouver and the Vancouver Island area, it's, it's definitely a lot like Minnesota where the craft beer is, it's one of the biggest, you know, small industries there. Right. Whereas in, in Seattle and Washington, it, it hasn't really caught up, which is why like, I love Minnesota. It's just so unique. And for me, it's like, it's like the BC of, <laughs> of the U S which is it's what, what is really cool. So it's cool to hear about, you know, North Carolina and, you know, and Maine and, and these other places that aren't necessarily West coast where in Canada, that's where, that's where the, the, the beer Mecca is anyway. Yeah. So, so that's super cool. And to, so to jump on that, and I'm, again, a little bit of a side away from just the beer, but more about what you guys do. I mean, I'm a hippie from Vancouver Island. I'll <laughs> say it right now. Sustainability is very important to me. And I know it's, it goes a long way with bent paddles. So just talk about that a little bit. For sure. So I like to take two like prongs to that. So sustainability in general with the environmental footprint, but I also like to take the human footprint into that conversation. So um, on the environmental side, you know, we always say we could do more. We want to do solar. We want to do all of these things. But we, in general, like we're pretty high up there with what we currently do. Um, just tons of efficiencies in the brewery, uh, light efficiency, uh, actual production equipment efficiency, um, the grain that's used, the spent grain. Um, we have a silo out there that farmers just come up and load it up for free. And oh, then cool. they have this really nutritionally sound um, feed for cattle and pigs. So that's not having a, like a waste charge and it's being reused. Cans, I mean, are kind of everywhere now. But when we started, there was only one other craft brewery in the state that really embraced cans. Mm. And people were like, cans? So we had to have this whole page of our website for like three years of like explaining cans are okay. Like <laughs> <laughs> not the 70s anymore. Yeah. Um, and so cans are like infinitely recyclable. Um, and this was a big jump. Like we helped bring this to Minnesota cool. um, and they just ship way lighter as well. Like to get to you as a raw material versus glass, like tons and tons of things like that. But on the people side, um, you know, we have, it started with four co-founders and one salesperson. Now we have 42 employees um, across many departments and we have, you know, full benefits for them. Wow. But some really interesting things are the wellness program. So one of our beer tenders, Corey, she's a massage therapist. She comes and does like neck rubs quarterly for everybody who signs wow. up. So a wellness program. And then we have a bunch of paddle boards, kayaks, snowshoes that any staff can check out and use just as part of the brand, but also just like really want a work-life balance to be important. So yeah, like mental health and, mental. you know, self-care goes a long way in yes. being part of the Ben Paddle family. Yes. And I think of that as sustainability as well. That's amazing. Yeah. Great answer. Wow. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He's floored. No, I, I just, I just love like Isha will go into a question and like, he's the one that tees it up. He's excited about it. And then he comes up. <laughs> wow. Wow. I wasn't ready for that. This is great. Me. Better than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well i mean let, let's talk a little bit more beer i mean okay. yeah let, let's and no one has a favorite kid but everyone has oh. a favorite kid right <laughs> yeah. like like that kind of thing like 
tell me if you're coming into the tap room any random day, what's the beer that you're most likely to pour yourself and why? Okay, we've already talked about it, but it's the 14 degree amber. Okay. Uh, I, love it. I, love it. Um, I mean, it really is. So for me, it's just so balanced. And um, I love, I, in general, I love IPAs and hoppy beers. So yep. like when I'm out and about, that's sort of what I do. But in terms of our beer, um, the 14 degree amber is my favorite. It's and well, it's just such an interesting style that not a lot of people, uh, there's not a ton of it in the U.S. And just think it's the best. Well, I can't wait to try it next. Yeah, but um, <laughs> what would you suggest to those who visit your brewery who aren't necessarily, you know, craft beer aficionados or, or used to the scene, you know, what, what's something you would suggest to them to get them into trying craft beer? Well, I encourage everybody at any craft beer uh, or brewery, excuse me, um, to get a flight uh, and have the beer tenders direct you in that way and like ask you some questions. So a flight can be so varied and we'll do one just light to dark of year rounds or just a miscellaneous, whatever people want on the flight. But anytime you're exploring craft beer or and that's how I do it when to travel too is I generally just start with a flight of course figure out what they're good at and then probably order a pint of whatever it's, I like the it's most. interesting you say that mm -hmm. though because like I'm that is exactly how I am like I want to try a bunch of things yeah. versus be like oh I can only try one or two if I want to mm -hmm. like be responsible and it's kind of like taboo in the industry where like you get the vibe that some breweries just like don't like the whole flight vibe and it's like why do you not want people to try more? Oh beers? yeah, we uh, that would not happen here. Like our, it is harder to pour, I guess, and you have to clean more glasses. But who <laughs> cares? And um, it's just a, such a neat way to expose new people to craft beer. And only twelve percent of the beer market in the U.S. is craft. So there's eighty eight percent not drinking craft. So to me, it's our job, all of the craft brewers, to get people in there, make sure they're comfortable and not feeling like there's an elitist situation happening uh, about, you don't know anything about craft beer. Yeah. We need people, new people to come in who have been curious about it, but don't know where to start. And I think flights are the best way to do that. Fair. Mm -hmm. And so Hazy, you just broke that door down, yeah. right? Yeah. The one that you fought forever. <laughs> so what's the one that you're still like resisting to this point? Like what's oh. the beer that people have either asked for, or you've talked about and just haven't quite gotten there. Well, I'd, I'd say we get a lot of non-alcoholic beer requests, which okay. I or or gluten-free. Gluten-free, yeah, 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 of course. And that's less of a, like we don't want to, but it's just more of a process. It's like it's a really those sure. two are kind of like, yeah. super hard to do and to do well. We don't want to do something that's not done well, of course. Sure. Um, and we think that you know there's options for gluten-free beer of people who do it much better, Burning Brothers and and all of these things. So. But, I mean, it's always sort of on our mind to definitely try to do a non-alcoholic beer. Okay. So, yeah, I know the gluten-free, like, industry is growing. I have a few friends um, who are, you know, beer fans and craft beer fans, even, like, in high school and university, and, you know, realize that, you know, they are celiac and, right. and whatnot. And, you know, my, my mother's one of or those as well. Or it's just irritating. Or it's just irritating. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I mean, there's one – I think there's only one in BC right now, and it's, in, it's, a, it's just outside of Vancouver, and they're just strictly – Gluten free. That's which, what Burning Brothers is. Okay, yeah. which is great, but again, it's like you're you're almost pigeonholed to just that brewery. So like maybe you don't like necessarily all their beers, but that's the only one. So right. it is something that I've been seeing a little bit pop up in BC. But uh, no, it's it's interesting that you say that you, you want to do it right rather than just put it out there. And again, the process is super complicated. Yeah. It's almost like a different. Process. Well, talk about that a little bit. What what are you know? No, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> like I've been told. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, so I just want to throw it up, but I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> told from the brewers. <laughs> right. But yeah, I think it just has its own scene, and yeah. um, it just needs attention to be done well. And we'll always keep our eye open for making it happen. But we really, you know, you mentioned Minnesota Law. It would be, it's not on the docket or anything, but if we could have like one or two taps of a cider, um, that would be helpful uh, sure. we can't so only in minnesota you have to have just only your beer at your tap room of course um, but we have so many people who are celiacs or um you know whatever and they want more option i'm like sorry we just don't offer it so there's nothing for you here so do you yeah. feel that that's a that's a hurdle in regards to like this the state laws you know i i know we've gone to a lot of breweries and whether it's not being able to sell what six packs uh not being able to do growlers Anything that's not growlers yeah. <laughs> or crawlers yep. yeah, yeah yeah so so <laughs> what if What's been most challenging for Bent Paddle with all the Minnesota laws? Because I I'm learning there's every a lot day. Of them. Well, that's the, I'm learning every day that there's there's so many, and for me it's it sucks because it's like this is what 
builds up you know local economies so so what what has been your biggest hurdle with with the state laws well um i'd say we haven't hit it yet but the one that we're most concerned about is the growler cap it's yeah called. and so we're at about fifteen thousand barrels a year the growler cap in minnesota currently though i hope it will go higher please it's, it's twenty thousand barrels um and we were headed that way pre-covid so like we needed to make some plans um but i think it's actually might be going okay uh in the legislature We'll find out by Some May. Some progress, right? Yeah, we'll see. Um, there's been a lot of good work with it. Um, but in general, what I'd love to see is that changed. And um, I know for the smaller breweries, we don't necessarily need it, but four and six packs. Um, so many supply chain issues right now that you just need to put to stay viable as a business. It's You need to be able to put something out that people want to buy. For me, it's always customer driven. What do people want? Um, they don't want to come to Bent Paddle one day get their crawler they've been or growler they've been getting for you know 10 years and then the next day it's gone for like this arbitrary yeah, yeah. reason so uh, that's what they want and and all of that and i get where it all comes from it's trying to protect all the different types of businesses um but there has to be a balance to it and it just can't be a hard no every right. time so Always. we already talked about my first impression isha's first impression of your tap room but tell us like what are you guys trying to cultivate here oh yeah i love that um so we had our original tap room at the production brewery which is just right over there um about a block away and when we started talking about them paddle in 2010 the tap room law hadn't even happened so it was oh. the surly bill the surly law they call it because um surly brewing championed it and it suddenly all of us, we could all have a tap room. So we put it into our plan the next year in 2011. And we're like, well, out of this 10,000 square feet, we best carve out a thousand square feet for a tap room. And, and it just sort of took off and it's, it is what helped develop this neighborhood. So that's a really good example cool. of Minnesota law, a change, change that created a lot of corresponding business it's pretty cool so we did that um and we quickly outgrew it it, was, it only sat about 50 people and on the weekends when we weren't brewing we'd open the garage door and try to like spill out but it was just kind of busting at the seams with uh people coming in especially on weekends in summer and we wandered over to this building which is a gorgeous old historic brick and timber frame building and not the whole upstairs was closed uh but we walked in karen and i and we were like whoa this place is crazy and we worked it out so we moved here in 2018 and now it's like over 200 people in this room and now we have the plaza or sorry it's called the yard now <laughs> uh, uh, uh <laughs> the yard um which extends it about 200 people more wow. we have the cedar bound stage outside not right now because it's snowing right. um but in general in the summer it is a really fun outdoor space and it was great through covid to have that um, yeah. So we would still have gathering and people felt way more comfortable outside That's awesome. and on the patio. And we just tried to make it as comfortable as possible for people. So it's just a neat spot. And our design came from the four co-founders and our tap room director, Pepin, um, getting together for like a year with the, you know, the architect and the builders. But it really is every piece, you know, you mentioned all the different like nooks and districts of it. Um, so we're in the game area, the merch area kind of general seating but the fireplace we call our living room and so it's everyone that's my favorite spot i never get to sit there it's usually people there but um <laughs> but that's a good thing right <laughs> yeah, i'm like fine whatever uh, <laughs> but above it every year at our one of our um annual uh employee parties we take a big group picture and every year we put it above like it's a family portrait that's awesome it's above the fireplace every time and then there's the barrel nook which is like representative of the barrel aged beers we do and then the far back is the inger and olsen room which we open up generally but it's also for special events and we donate a lot to charity so they can have like smaller fundraisers and this building is called the Inger and Olsen building. And those of you who know Duluth, the Inger Tower, Inger, um, is like one of those iconic historical sites. And this was part of the Inger, Inger and Olsen Furniture Company. Oh, wow. So this was the warehouse and the bigger building that is now Inger and Olsen cool. Lofts, or Inger Lofts, is, was the main furniture store of, the, of Duluth. That's so cool. Yeah. I mean, no, the history is definitely rich. <laughs> 
you know, in, in this town, I, I can feel it for sure. Um, I mean, speak to some of the events that you hold outside of the, the brewery yoga, because yeah. obviously you've got the <laughs> stage there. I mean, I see, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pointing this direction. I see the Cedar Bound stage, but I also see, you know, it's not quite a Persian rug, but hey, it'll yeah. do. I mean, it's it's a big rug over there. Live where music rug. Where I'm sure you do some music too. So talk about some of the bands that you bring in and other events that you hold here at Ben Paddle. Totally. So every Thursday and Saturday, we have live music. Um, we do larger bands in the summer when we can put them yeah. out on the Cedar Bound stage. But we have just tons of local, um, mostly local, you know, one or two piece, um, especially on Thursdays. But then again, in the summer, we just try to bring in bigger local acts. We were super proud during the pandemic we did a virtual set. So our, our sound guy sat far away and the band, the single person or the couple of band yeah. members that were in a pod or something, uh, sang and we did this whole virtual concert thing that, wow. and we rate, we just put up their like Venmo code and their QR code because right. musicians were struggling so you much. Donate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And people just donated. That's so cool. It was cool. And so we just love having live music here, but we do certain larger events too. So kind of quarterly, the one that we have coming up is Festiversary. And that I was a former event planner before Ben Paddle. Okay. And that's how I got involved in the industry. Um, Festiversary is about a 3,000 person, like kind of mini, not mini, but our own beer fest in the parking lot and area here. So 3,000 people. Um, it's on May 21st, 2020. Uh, and it has um, two stages of live music, food trucks galore, tons of our own beer. Uh, family-friendly activities, community partner booths. It's just a huge celebration, and we haven't had it since 2019. Oh, so it's crazy. Wow. So that's coming right up. We nice. also do Hootenanny, which is our own little, like, <laughs> get-down party right before the Alpine North Beer Festival, which yeah. is at Bayfront. That's the best beer festival in the state, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's no, it's impossible <laughs> to find a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Inger and also the Inger Lofts has Airbnbs, just saying. Oh, Ooh, noted. Nobody knows that, yeah. <laughs> You're um, here first. <laughs> right. So that one, we so we do our little pre-party for that. Um, that beer fest is stellar. Somehow it gets good weather uh, every year. <laughs> I just ruined it. Um, and then we do a... A uh, reggae party. We nice. do a Halloween party that's called the Haunted Paddle with the like best costume contest in Duluth, as far as I'm oh. concerned. And we haven't had that for many years either. So we do just some certain larger events, um, always beer focused. And yeah, it's a good time. Man, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Holy. No kidding. Ah, maybe you should move. <laughs> I think I might. Well, if I do, though, will you let me perform there? Because by the uh, well, I was a musician and I thought I was going to be a rock star before what? I jumped was, into this in oh industry. Gosh, really? <laughs> so, I mean, if, if you allow me, I'd love to perform on that Colin stage. Colin plays music. He's a music major. Colin, where the hell are you? Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so cool. And again, like from an artistic point of view, like this is, this is my artistic out, you know, output now since Fabulous. when I went to university, I kind of put music on the shelf and, but, but applied those skills to like the podcasting and everything. But ah. every brewery I've gone to on this visit that has like a little stage for music or has a little art of freaking mountain bikers. Like you guys have like that, that warms <laughs> my heart. So, I mean, I'm just swooning at the whole experience oh, of this place. Cool. That's awesome. Um, I, I have one last question that we'll get into uh, towards the end about just some of their initiatives. Do you have anything else about beer or, you know, the tap room in general? Just curious now that you've moved the tap room over here, obviously, and not now, like it's been well established, but tell us about the brewing facility then that you guys are working. Ooh, on. sure. So it's our original brewery. Um, and it is so fun to have seen it when we first, you know, opened it in 2013, we had four little 60 barrel tanks and now we have only 90 and 120. So they're like, double yeah. the size, <laughs> and it's full. I used to be able to like, move, it's not skateboard, but like skate around and like move <laughs> around. Uh, and now it's just tight and we have this really cool canning line and everybody's just working their ass off over there. Um, so I hope to get to show it to you guys. No, I'm yeah. excited to see it. Um, mm -hmm. So you talked about how like you give back to the community. You know, local initiatives are big. You know, for Ben Paddle, um, you have one in particular called Paddle It Forward. Yes. Tell us about it. All right. So that's my role here. So okay. I do marketing and outreach. So outreach covers all sins, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, and if anyone reaching out, I'm your woman. Um, so what we do with the Paddle It Forward program, just because of how Brian and Colin were at brew pubs before, there were so many requests for a charitable, you know, beer tasting or an item or, and we knew this would happen straight away. So even when we first started, we had a, a way to say yes, is like what we had tried to say about it. 
And so anytime anyone reaches out, we have a form on the website. We give away items for raffles, silent auction. We do beer and tasting stations as long as they have the right legal requirements, which is intense. Um, and then we do the venue. So the Inger and Olsen room or just a general, if it's a slower night, like we can just table and have a full scale kind of charitable thing. So we give away the uh, taproom facility a lot uh, at no cost to nonprofits. So in general, um, we've done over $500,000 in value to over 500 nonprofits since we opened in 2013. Wow. Um, and we're just super proud of that. We That's wanted, amazing. We wanted to be a company with a soul. <laughs> Honestly, that <laughs> that describes, I think, Ben Paddle perfectly. Thanks. Honestly, so yeah. I mean, thank you so much for for having us. Yeah, we're Cheers. almost out of beer. I, uh, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll have to get any one of these hoppies out there. But uh, any anything else you have? No, I mean, just thank you so much for having us again. Like Duluth as a whole, oh. awesome experience. Everyone needs to come out. Maybe not in April. Maybe you want to come in the summer, in the fall. Mud season. Um, but I mean, <laughs> so much here, breweries the landscape as a whole and Beautiful. and you guys i mean I, I think it goes without saying a lot of people view ben paddle as kind of the staple of beer up here in duluth so awesome. it's just really cool to see how it's already grown and i mean looking back in three years i hope that it's just grown that much more well thanks we're just hanging on and we love it we love what we do every day so thanks like for this, coming absolute pleasure can't wait to come back in the summer yeah to enjoy all that is when you know, you're moving here <laughs> yes uh, the cedar <laughs> bound you know the, the cedar bound stage and everything and uh, maybe i'll play a couple tunes here as oh, well perfect love <laughs> thank it thank you so much we really appreciate it cool who's winning the stanley cup this year oh last one <laughs> last one no, that, that, we won't use that <laughs> right. awesome. made me swear hi guys <laughs>